I finally caved and decided that the saw shop needs a second story. All right, if you haven't been in the saw shop before, let's just check it out. It's a little pole barn that I built a few years ago. I uh, got a lot of old barn wood and stuff on the outside and inside. Got my saws, got some backup climbing stuff. Do my sharpening over here mainly. Some saws I'm testing on. This guy actually came out of a couple houses ago. Just couldn't let it go. And it leads up kind of to nowhere. Something hideous happened to this ladder. I cannot remember what, but it's all bentified. This dude over here is broken. When you're on it, you kind of holding on to something else. I got my lasers out and marked where all my joists are gonna go and the bottom of them. That way when I put the brackets in, you know, I know right where to go. And speaking of brackets, I've got a nice array of stuff from previous jobs. No two of them are really identical. So when I built this place, I did think that I might put a second floor on it, you know, like an upstairs floor, but I kind of liked it open. So I kept it open. It was good for stashing boats in here. We got that staircase coming up. I figured it'd be good to, you know, top it off. I got my joist hanger collection of different sized hardware hanging. We've had our first casualty with a LED light bulb completely biting the dust. Oh. I guess the rope's gotta go too. Have you guys been killing stuff? The true inhabitants of the saw shop are the kitties. This is Tweets, the orange one, and Sylvie. You guys want some breakfast? Do you guys want some breakfast? Oh yeah. You can have breakfast. Yeah, so the cats kind of co-inhabit the saw shop. And these guys I actually bought and whoa, lumber's expensive right now. I think I spent like a hundred bucks on these two by sixes, which previously in my mind is like 30 bucks worth of lumber. Now, I don't know about you, but the way I do this is I will set the joists in place first. You know, kind of set them in place, make sure everything's lining up, and then I'll come back and do an extra screw or nail or two just to really lock them in. I'm super torn about this. Do I roof in th just this center section, which is really all the storage I need, or do I roof in that section too? All right, I got the joists in. Now I kind of like the idea of the whole thing. You know, it makes it more like a full loft. Plus, I can see storing stuff up here and just 
push it off the other side. So, uh, yeah, we're doing both sides. I just think it's going to be better. It's almost like a little sleeping loft up here. And to give you kind of like an orientation, here's the rest of the building. It's got this front porch, which is all kind of old barn wood that I recovered from my father-in-law's place. Awesome old stuff. Outside is board and batten. It's got the pergola dealio up top. Then on this side, it's got a big set of swinging doors. So that baby will like swing open. You can drive a mower or whatever in there. And sometimes I kind of dawdle with the idea of putting a lean-to over there for my mowers and stuff. So I haven't done that yet. but I just haven't exactly figured it out in this lifetime. My coverage, I think I need one more this way. It's gonna get a little trimmage and two long skinny guys. It just keeps on snowing. So, oh yeah, okay, I got, here's what I got. I got one more sheet of OSB, and then I got some funkified leftover plywood from all kinds of jobs. I have no recollection of where I got this. Pulled it off the curb somewhere out of a dumpster before the pandemic or something like that. But uh, yeah, we'll put this down. Yeah, so this guy, I think it's gonna fit in here. Now that little mouse hole fits pretty good. I don't know what happened to that corner. Got nibbled, but we're gonna worry about little corners. You guys know that old woodworking uh, building philosophy that goes measure twice and cut once and it's actually embodied in a book by I think the guy is Norm something I read it back in the 90s had a big impact on me and I was like that's what woodworking is all about you know you gotta be really particular and careful measure twice cut once but I think I realized in this job that I never really actually embodied that philosophy at best, I would measure once carefully and cut once, but I don't think I've ever measured twice, cut once. I mean, come on. On this project, we're doing don't measure, cut quick. It's just, it's just a different way to build, and I think it's the way I do it a lot of the time. All right, let's get this bad boy in place. We'll see if don't measure, cut quick actually worked out. Yes, perfectly. Look at that. Oh wait, that's not right. Okay, there we go. Closed it up. Tight down there, tight over here. I've got a little two inch overhang over there. I think I'm just gonna leave it. I don't think it's hurting anybody. It's kind of cool in fact. It's like a little, little lip. Almost always I would do screws if you're gonna be walking around on it because you don't want squeakity squeak, but this is not a walking, dancing kind of floor. Couple nails, they're galvanized. They're big-ish, they're gonna do the job. And then since we're up here, I guess we gotta check out the pergola. It is kinda big, I don't know, maybe seven, eight feet long and these windows pop open in the summer, that's nice. In the winter, not so much. Uh, it just offers like a little ventilation for the building, you know, like the hot air rises and flows and stuff. Plus, I just always thought it kind of looked cool. And if you're curious about these beams, these are kind of literal three by fives and they came out of that same barn that I pulled out of my father-in-law's place, John's old barn. And they were the roof trusses in the barn. 
I ended up having to shorten them and cut them down. They were kind of nibbled and some had been burned at the ends. But anyway, big old beefy three by fives. You just don't see trusses like that or wood like that these days, really, unless you mill it yourself. So anyway, that ended up being the roof. And then this was some old tongue and groove we had for the house project that we never used. So that was upcycled, recycled, moved over or whatever. That piece just seemed like it was getting in the way a little bit. This handle was uh, on my bus. Then it was in my truck as like my big slider in the truck. And a piece of wood made it out here. And now it's my handle to get up in the loft. Anyway, loft is just ready for a little bit of cleanup and maybe a replacement light bulb or two. Uh, now for the careful and meticulous process of storing things using the Dewey Decimal System up top in the loft. All right, thanks for checking out the video. I should say that it is not necessarily like a how-to video going on here. It's more like just a story of how I did it, and I appreciate you checking it out.